Um, I, I just had one announcement immediately after this event. Uh, there, there will be a group of us gathering in the parking lot to build an arc. Um, if you'd like to join that, please just come up two by two. Um, I, I, I want to talk a, a little bit about specifically what CSBA is, is doing about this mess and in general what we're looking to our partners to work with us on. Um, our, our major initiative over the next few months will be filing our, our landmark adequacy lawsuit. And we've been preparing this for years because you, know, you only get one shot out of the gun with something like this. And we're making sure that we have uh, everything lined up before we do this. But we're quite confident that we can make the case um, to the uh, state courts that the state of California is actually um, out of compliance with the state constitution. And the reason we say that is because the state constitution requires that a, the state provide a free and appropriate public education to all school-aged children. They have defined what appropriate it is by um, establishing the highest academic standards in the nation. Only Massachusetts rivals us in, in the academic standards that we have. But as you've heard a number of times today, we rank 50th in per student funding. So there's, there's definitely a huge disconnect between what we're expecting and what we're willing to pay for. Essentially, we're telling the children of California, we want you to achieve at high levels. We just don't want to pay for it. So we, we think we have a pretty strong uh, court case, and that, that will be our play. Um, to use the, the football analogy, now you, you've heard, obviously, the, the league and California Forward are working on the, the running plays. Um, Bay Area Council is working on the, the uh, throwing play. And essentially, CSBA is uh, going to go talk with the umpires. <laughs> um, Adequacy is, is a huge issue, and I remind people that you know when, when I went to, to California schools, our public school system was the envy of the nation. People moved to California to enroll their children in California public schools. We have truly lost our way, and, and I, I tell people, all of us, we, need to, we really should be ashamed. We are not making the same sacrifices for our children that were made for us. And if we don't correct it very soon, there are going to be severe long-term consequences. And an, another part of the tyranny that we're um, confronting right now is, as a state, the way we're solving our budget problems is by heaping new debt on our children, because it's our children and grandchildren that ultimately are going to have to pay these long-term debts that the state's incur incurring. At the same time, we're depriving them of an education that would give them the earning ability to actually pay off those debts. And we, 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 as the current generation, need, need to stop it now, and we need to stop it this year. And that, that's where your role as civic leaders is really going to play a big part, uh, because it's the, the crucible is going to be at November's ballot. That's when a lot of the pieces are either going to go into play or suffer a setback. And of course, we're, we're going to be depending on you to get the word out in the community that this is our opportunity to take our government back in our hands and set it up the correct way rather than let it to continue to uh, dysfunction. Um, some of the other key things that we want to see and that we'll be working with our, our partners that you've heard from today um, has to do with reapportionment. And you've already heard Proposition 11 took care of that and set it up. We think the, the way uh, district boundaries for the state legislature have been gerrymandered is wrong. It makes absolutely no sense to come up for election to the assembly every two years if you have a 98% chance of being reelected anyway. How is that holding them accountable to the electorate? It's not. And as a consequence, they care a whole lot more about what their party leadership thinks than what the folks back at home think because the folks back at home can't touch them. Their party leadership, on the other hand, determines their committee assignments and even how big their office is. You know, so there's, it doesn't take long to figure out how, you know, where their priorities are and who it is that they're going to be looking to for leadership. We need to have them start worrying about the people back home so they truly become uh, our elected representatives. Um, and also um, remember that there's a process in play right now to implement Proposition 11 and uh, you can sign up to actually become a part of that reapportionment process and I encourage you to, to do that. Um, term limits is, a, is another thing that we think is a, an experiment that has utterly failed. Um, we understand why this was voted on by voters. It, it was basically um, to punish 
um, career politicians because we thought that, that uh, as a whole, they weren't doing very well. But what we did with this is to truly throw out the baby with the, ba the bathwater. I mean, we're, we are um, terming out both good and bad legislators and guaranteeing that we always have a um, amateur legislature. Remember, we've, we've considered doing this for our, con our congressional delegation from California, which is the, the largest in the nation. Um, and the reason we didn't was because the persuasive argument that, wait a minute, if we term limit our members of Congress and no other state does, then we'll never have any seniority or any real power in Congress. And no one actually stopped to think, so well now what did we do with our state legislature by imposing term limits? We, we've just turned them into a bumbling gang of amateurs that really don't know a whole lot about what's going on. By the time they get it somewhat figured out, they're termed out and looking for the next office. Now, I, um, it's dangerous using generalizations. I know quite a few of our members of, of the Assembly and the Senate, and many of them are great people with long records of civic service and really want to do well, but they too are frustrated with term limits. They know, they realize that they need to spend more time there to really know how things work. So I, I term limits is, is something that I think we need to toss out and as an electorate um, scold ourselves because really term limits made for a lazy electorate um, because when somebody is not performing well, it should be our responsibility to rise up and vote them out of office. And conversely, if they're doing well, we should continue them in office. But we shouldn't make it just a simple function of throwing everybody out, good or bad, every so often just because we don't want to have to go to the trouble of voting them out. Um, the state budget and taxes is, is another area that we see desperately needs to be reformed. We are um, one of only 12 states in the nation that requires a uh, supermajority vote to uh, raise taxes. We are one of only three states in the nation that requires a majority vote to pass a budget, and we are the only state in the nation that requires both. Okay, and I, I know that I have many conservative friends from where I am who, who argue vehemently for the, um, the supermajority votes for budgets and, and uh, increased taxes, arguing that we really need that to maintain fiscal discipline. Come on. <laughs> uh, you know, I, what more proof do we need than the last few years of, of this that that just simply isn't true? Um, so we, we definitely are anxious to see something happen to put the majority back in power rather than simply give, giving um, a big stick to the minority to use for political leverage. It's not serving the people of California well and it's something that we really need to reform. Um, lastly, I, I, wanted to, I want to talk about alignment. One of the, the points that's been made during this argument, and I, I forget who the speaker was at our summit that, that used this point, but the way we've set up the relationship between state and federal government is that the powers of the federal government are specifically identified in the Constitution, the Bill of Rights. All other powers are reserved for the states. Okay. In our state government, we didn't quite set it up that way. It, the way it should be, if we're following that model, is that the responsibilities of the state should be specifically identified and all other powers reserved for local government. And then that way we would have the same kind of relationship with the state government that the state has with the federal government. And I, I think the, the dysfunction of the system that we've adopted was contained uh, by uh, the Speaker Pro Tem of the Senate recently said that he doesn't see why people are trying to make this artificial distinction between local and, and state funds. After all, we're all one state. I'm, I'm sure his argument would be quite different if it was the federal government that was trying to steal the state's money to balance its budgets, and making the argument, well, gosh, we're all one nation. Well, and when we go through and reorganize the way state government is, I, we really do need, need to make clear exactly what it is we expect the state to be responsible for. It should be a very specific and a very limited number of things that they're responsible for. Fr frankly, they need to focus. <laughs> you know, judging by the number of bills that we analyze every year, there's, there's just much too much going on there. I, I don't know that I would necessarily favor a part-time legislature. I, it's, it's a solution I'm not sure is going to um, 
do what we want it to do, uh, but I think we do need to limit w what it is that they're focused on and reserve everything else for us to deal with locally because, fr quite frankly, we're the ones that people see in the grocery stores. We're the ones that people know the home numbers for. We are the real face of government in our communities, and people are more likely to trust us for good reason because they, they can find us and tell us what they think if they're not happy with the way government's being run. The more remote government becomes from our communities, the more abstract the issues become and the weirder things get, as, as we've, we've seen. It's totally become dysfunctional. Um, they, they are disconnected from the daily lives of people that live in our communities, and it's time that we rise up and we set things straight. So again, I, I, want, I want all of you please to carry this message forward, and, and we're making the rounds all over the state to get people riled up that this, this is our year. This is our opportunity as the people of California to rise up and take our government back for the people the way it was supposed to be. And I encourage you to you know, keep talking and keep attending forums like this. Organize others, invite us. We'll, we will come and talk anytime uh, we need to uh, because we, we've really only got one good shot and that's on the November ballot. So, th so thank you all for coming and Diane, I'll turn the podium back over to you. Thank you very, very much. Are there uh, questions for the panel? No, I, I think they smell the homeward trail. So <laughs> thank you all very much for coming to Napa today. And uh, we really appreciate your participation. And when our, while our last panel transitions up here, I'd like to take this opportunity uh, again, to thank again our co-sponsor, the town of Yauntville, it would, uh, to enjoy their new facility. It's been really great. Uh, we had a number of Napa County um, staff members who showed up here about 6.30, 7 to uh, uh, help um, set up, and, and we're very appreciative of that. And I had a good Calistoga seroptimus, Mina Byrne, who came and, and helped us with, volunteered to help with check-in, and I want to publicly thank her. But most of all, I want to thank Joanne Melgar, Board of Supervisors, Staff Assistant. Most of you interacted one way or another with Joanne, maybe even if it was only by email, but we, I couldn't do this. We could not have done this without Joanne. 